What time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. It's down there. It's down there. And it's time to find my Instagram, DK Amanda, G-E-E. K-O-I Amanda, same on Twitter. And let's get this interview started. All right, you guys, you might have seen, I posted an interview earlier where I interviewed Jamil Jamel, Glenn Powell, Paul McCall Williams, all cast talent voice cast from Jurassic World Camp Creatius, which is on Netflix now. It is on Netflix. It's an animated series, and I interviewed them, which I also did an interview with the producers, directors of I interviewed Colin Trevero, Trevero, is that how you say it, and Scott Creamer. Now, Colin is known before because he's done some directing and, and all from the Jurassic World movies. So he's one that is known in the franchise, and Scott Creamer came on to do some directing in, in this animated series as well as some writing, both of them. So we got to interview him. I will get it started. It was three of us. And of course, they didn't give us the, the they only gave us the audio, not the video. So you're going to have to listen with me once again. This to both of you. And I guess um, we can start with Scott. Um, when we started the series, I was really excited to see um, Darius as the lead. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Paul we'll Michael did an incredible job. Mm -hmm. um, how important was it to you um, to have representation um, in the series when you were producing the show? Oh, hugely important. You know, we, we really wanted uh, our cast to uh, and our, our characters to reflect the world around us, and so uh, diversity very important. We have a we have a very diverse crew. We have a very diverse writers' room. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, it, it was very important for us to, you know, for every kid watching can see a version of themselves or someone they can identify with uh and uh you know that was yes it was very important <laughs> <laughs> I, I i second everything that scott said and and just something that i just really observed over the time of working with the writers is how important it was for everyone to to not just have kids be able to see uh themselves on screen but uh for those characters to be just complete and, and fully well-rounded and rich and uh, the way that they wrote each of these kids and, and how deeply they went into the anxieties and the fears that we all have when we're both children and teenagers and, and then also how those uh, through the perspective of their identity and, and their background uh, I thought was really brilliant and, and, and very, um, very carefully considered. I'm going to tell you, I thought so too. I thought so too. And I've talked about this. I talked about it in my last interview and, and even I think my review that I love the character developments in this. I mean, they're, they are kids, they're teens, you know, but like Darius, Darius, is a diverse cast, but also it got into, you know, problems that kids these days or even teens could go through. Darius had a loss in his family. You know, his father actually died. But even some of the other characters, it really got into different aspects of their life. And we even had one that was kind of like a social media person, which, you know, I have a little fondness for <laughs> social media. But just the insecurities and character of the characters. And, and I think it did a great job. My question. My question. Hi, guys. I'm Amanda from Guide for Moms and Crazy Amanda Reacts That's on fine. YouTube. Subscribe. Um, my question is to either whoever wants to answer it I watched this with my uh, my young you know nephew who's around six years old and even my even. son who is mm -hmm. around 15 exactly. and they both loved it I was wondering how you all kind of balanced to keeping it kid friendly with you know man-eating dinosaurs <laughs> you know did you have to cut back a lot do not to get too gruesome where uh you know, I don't think we really cut back all that much. You know, we, you know, we never wanted to show a lot of gore or blood on screen. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, we tried to play it like it was one of these features. Like we really wanted to to lean into the the scares of it, the the horror into it, as well as the awe and the wonder. But I mean, it's yeah. really it's a big part of of the features and of the franchise, and we really. Uh, 
wanted it to, to feel uh, of the entire universe. Yeah, I'm, I'm a parent. I have, I have two kids, and, and my job has been to, uh, for the past you know six years, has been to find a, a real balance in, in what I would want to watch with my kids and, and feel comfortable with them seeing. And I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want them coming into our bedroom in the middle of the night uh, with nightmares. Oh, yeah. That's that's not my intention. And and yet, oh, yeah. uh, I I do love seeing them, you know, face the harsher realities of the world sometimes and, and recognize that there are there are things that are very unsafe because uh, that's important. And I think dinosaurs are. Even if it's if it's uh, a bit of an introduction to uh, you know the dangers of the world, I think I think that's a good thing. I think it's important. Yeah, it's true. especially in 2020 because we might have dinosaurs next. Oh, I forgot <laughs> Thank I said you that. Guys. Wait for it. I literally just said that to somebody. If this is this will be the year that dinosaurs will come back. And start. Don't say that, Scott. Don't say it. <laughs> okay. I forgot that I had said that. Yeah, because that's true. When he said, you know, we have to kind of prepare our kids. Not It's not always flowers and sunshine and rainbows. And, and you don't want to portray that in the the things that they watch, that life is always going to be about sunshines and rainbows, that there are scary things you have to stay away from. Maybe not dinosaurs. You never know 2020, but... Hi, I'm Lynette with FantasticLife.com, mm-hmm. and my question is for one or either whoever wants to answer. So what was it like getting Steven St- uh, Spielberg's seal of approval on this project, and what was his involvement, if any? So go ahead, go ahead, Scott. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, he gave the, 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 the final green light to us, and, and, uh, and then uh, I, I, I'm not sure how much Colin could probably speak to this more. At the, right before uh, quarantine, uh, we ran Stephen through everything uh, that we had come up with, with final animation and, and the characters, and he was just, uh, he was very excited and it, it only had positive things to say. So yeah, that'll give you a lot of confidence uh, moving forward. I'm gonna have to do a post. Maybe I'll link it down below some some little Easter eggs and fun facts, you know. Um, so yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed the series, and I heard is there gonna be a second? Is there gonna be a second season? I hope so. I hope so because I thought it was fun, and it only had eight episodes, about 25, 30 minutes each, so it was a fast watch. I'm ready for more. I thought it was a delight. Let me know what y'all think. Comments, thumbs, and all that. Until next time, bye.